Ahoy, a couple years ago, I reviewed Mozart Air 2 gimbal, and I call this one the beast. It's big and it's heavy. Well, Mozart is back with new updated version, Mozart Air 2S. It's a gimbal which can do pretty much everything you can dream about. Well, let's look at this one today and see what has changed, what has been improved. Let's take it out to film a bit. And for the new faces, welcome. My name is Zdenka Darola. This channel is all about photography and video, so if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Let's check out the build. First of all, this gimbal came in this lightweight carrying bag. What is included is the gimbal, tripod, charging USB-C cable, little backpack cables, quick release plate, support rod, and basic manual. As I mentioned earlier, this gimbal is quite large, not that super compact and light, but if you are all about excellent stabilization, build and being able to add on many accessories for very advanced filming, this would be the one of those choices. This gimbal is made of metal. It's built to last. Folded and unfolded dimensions are displayed on the screen, Minimum payload is 500 grams and maximum payload is 4,200 grams. What has changed from the previous version is the battery. Before you had these batteries which you would place in, the new version R2S has built in 3,200 mAh battery. Out of all gimbals on the market, at this moment, this gimbal has the longest battery life. You can film up to 20 hours. The charging time is only two hours and yes, you can use it while charging. Before you would press only the power button to turn the gimbal on. Now you have to turn on the battery first by pressing and holding. Then you can turn on the power button on the gimbal. What else has been changed when it comes to build? Each axis can be locked, so it makes it much easier when you're attaching the camera and balancing the gimbal. It is also better for transportation and storage. The buttons, trigger buttons, smart wheel and front interface has changed too. Everything seems to be a bit different. Let's check out the smart micro hand wheel. It is a little new feature which you pull out like this and now you can have very precise control of functions like PTZ, lens control and follow focus. If you turn the previous version Air 2 gimbal around, you can see that you didn't have many options to attach accessories. New version R2S has many options. Ari rosette for stuff like cold shoes, pipe clamp, handle slide bar, cold shoe extensions for accessories such as microphones, lights and monitor for example, and M4 mounting hole is for sliders, handles and other expansion accessories. You can also get Moza eye focus and accessory which will help you control focus, focus shift duration, focal length, zoom and zoom duration which can be preset from starting to ending point. Attaching the camera it's very easy. The quick release system is compatible with Manfrotto quick release plate for those wondering and it has built in hard stop. It is very simple to attach and balance. I'm using Sony a7S III. One thing I should point out that it has balance check version 4.0. You can see on OLED screen balance state of each axis, which will help you to quickly correct the setup. It also allows you to save three sets of profile setting data. What it means that you can save individual profile of the camera, so next time you don't have to reconfigure the setup again. The gimbal doesn't have any vibrations due to auto tuning feature, as it calculates the most optimal parameters for your camera setup. When it comes to compatibility, they have very detailed compatibility list on their website. If you ask me if your camera is compatible with this gimbal, I won't know the answer. So I highly suggest to check that list. Now, as this gimbal is brand new and the firmware is constantly being updated, right now the Sony a7S III is a little bit limited. You can only really control the start and stop recording with the power button or trigger depending on what you configure. I have it set up so I double press the power button to start and stop recording, but I would recommend the trigger instead. When I power the gimbal on, the camera starts recording automatically. I cannot control other settings on this camera via gimbal at this moment. Hopefully this will be enabled in the future.
Well, so I'm ready with the camera to do a little bit of stabilization test. And uh, first I'm going to be doing just a regular walk. Then I'm going to go for a ninja softer walk. And then I'm going to go for full speed run. So we'll see how this baby can handle it. And just like all the other gimbals, this gimbal also offers pan tilt follow mode, pan follow mode, tilt follow mode, roll follow mode, uh, sports gear mode, inception mode, and FPV mode. When it comes to operating this gimbal, there is a little bit of a learning curve. It is not so straightforward because on the buttons, it's not really written that if you're gonna press that, you're gonna get to this mode, and if you're gonna press that, then you're gonna get to that mode. Meaning, for example, that if I double press the TV button, I'm going to be in tilt follow mode. If I double press the AV button, I'm going to be in pan follow mode. If I press and hold the trigger, I'm going to enter tilt follow mode. So, yeah, there is a little bit learning curve. I reviewed other gimbals which had a lot easier navigation, but this one, once you figure it out, it becomes easy. They had luckily everything laid out in the manual. So let me run through them quickly and let's start with the trigger. If I double press, I'm going to be recentering the gimbal. If I triple press, I'm going to be entering the selfie mode. If I double press again, it's going to recenter again, obviously. And now if I press and hold the trigger, it will enter the pan tilt following mode. Power button is self-explanatory. If you hold it for three seconds, you will turn on the gimbal or turn it off. If you shortly press one time, you'll start or stop recording. And if you press two times, it will take photo. Let's look at the smart wheel. This smart wheel has many working modes, which can be changed by pressing one time the M button. You will see a little icon on the screen, what a mode it has. F1 and F2 is for controlling the external follow focus motor, which can be purchased separately. FE is for electronic follow focus. Next, we have controlling the tilt axis. Next is controlling roll axis. And lastly, the pan axis. Joystick is the usual, moving the camera up, down, left and right. On the top from joystick is TV. If you press one time, you can control TV on compatible cameras. If you press two times, you will switch the gimbal to tilt follow mode. Down we have AV button, which if you press one time, you can control aperture. If you press two times, you will get to pan follow mode. Left button, where it says ISO, if you press one time, will control ISO. If you press two times, it will switch to roll follow mode. And right button, if you press one time, will enter or exit preview. Menu button is in the center which will take you where you can make all changes in settings. And if you hold for three seconds, it will put gimbal into sleep or wake up mode. Last button is here on the right side, and that is the S. If you press one time, you will get to sports gear mode. If you press two times, you will enter inception mode. If you press three times, you will be in FPV mode. And if you hold for three seconds, the gimbal will go into auto tune to get rid of any possible vibrations. There are two modes I would like to show you. One would be the inception mode and the other one would be FPV mode. The inception mode, and you get there by pressing two times the S button. First of all, you can control the movement yourself. You can just press the joystick to the right and left to create the movement, or you can use the automatic rotation where you can adjust the speed and also how much you want it to rotate, 180 or 360. So let me try that. And now it's automatically rotating. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> it's just spinning on its own. Let me get out of that and double press to get to basic position. The FPV mode, and you get there by triple pressing the ISO, will allow you to actually double pressing the ISO FPV mode, will allow you to use the movement actually full 360 movement of roll motors. When it comes to range of motion of each axis, control the rotation range of pan axis is 360 degrees, roll axis is plus 60 to minus 30, and tilt axis is plus 180 to minus 95. 
The gimbal can be connected with your smartphone via Bluetooth version 5. The connection is very fast. I had no issues whatsoever. And the Moza Master app, which you would be using, is the same like before. Nothing has changed. It shows you the battery level. You can control the gimbal with a remote control feature. You've got these joysticks here, so when you move them, it moves the gimbal. Here you can also enter mimic motion control. When you move the phone, the gimbal will move. You can control each axis independently, and you can also adjust the sensitivity of the gimbal movement. Gimbal settings will give you all options to customize camera if your camera is compatible, motor settings, button functions, calibration, advanced settings, and configuration. In creative video, you can do motion time-lapse, track recording, variable speed time-lapse, fixed point time-lapse, and object tracking. Here you can mount your smartphone above the camera with attachment which can be purchased separately, select target on the phone and track your object. Mota Air 2S gimbal is a beast and I could not help but joke a little bit, you know, when you are holding this heavy gimbal for a while and then you grab the smartphone gimbal, this is what happens. So yes, big gimbal and heavy, but extremely smooth with amazing battery life. 20 hours. Link to this product, in case you want to check it out, can be found below the video in a video description. Well, hit the thumbs up if you found this video informative and subscribe to future videos starting next week. Big chain of filming videos is coming up. How to film handheld, how to film with gimbals, transitions and all that, everything on locations throughout the entire summer. So you don't want to miss that. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to say hi or ahoy, you can leave it below and I'll see you my friends in the next video. Ciao. Ahoy. As I'm filming here, I just looked up here on the hill and look what did I see? There are some people having fun with the kite surfing. <laughs> there are two modes I want to show you. One would be the inception mode and the other one would be the FPV mode. If you select the inception mode by pressing the S button two times. <laughs> I kind of forgot how to get there.